Good morning, folks. This morning's uh, soap is from uh, Captain's Choice. The name of this one here is North. This one here is going to be uh, discontinued. As a matter of fact, he's already sold out of the soap in this uh, particular scent, but there is uh, the shaving cream and aftershave in this scent that's still available. And I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. This is a very soft soap. Uh, you know, it's close to a crope. I mean, it is really soft. Uh, the scent on this one here, in Captain's Choice North, is uh, see evergreen, juniper, and vanilla. I was a little concerned when I first ordered this that maybe the evergreen might be a little bit too heavy. And per my nose, uh, the juniper and the vanilla helps take off the edge per my nose <laughs> on the evergreen. It's a really nice scent. I'm glad I got it. Uh, got the Allen block here, no rubber band. Humphrey's Witch Hazel, that citrus uh, scented. And I also got the uh, matching aftershave here. If um, I hadn't uh, saw the posting where this scent was going to be discontinued, uh, I don't know that I would ever would have bought this scent. But since it was going to be discontinued, it kind of helped prompt me to get it, and glad I did. It, it really does. It smells great. That's that's a really nice scent, at least per my nose. Got it whipped up here. My uh, bowl, thrift store fine. It whipped up there pretty nice with a uh, Omega more hair brush just a small knot but uh man sure does smell good and uh i should, probably should say that i noticed when i was whipping this up in the bowl that the it seems to take a little bit of water so uh, uh for those that might be uh how you say learning how to lather uh this one here will take some water at least that's my been my experience and also today through my travels over the past week um uh, we were in Eureka Springs and found this gem, Micromatic Clog Proof. And been one of my complaints about this particular model, it seems there always be some brassing up here. This one here is an outstanding shape. Paid a whole ten dollars for it. It's got a gem blade in it also. But wow, I really got lucky finding that one. That is it had a lot of soap scum on it, whatnot, cleaned it up. Uh, didn't take a whole lot, just hot water and gone, wiped it all up, and man, it really looks good. <laughs> Took that soap scum right on off. I got the uh, pre-shaved soap here from Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements. Uh, it's unscented, but it is methylated, and it's uh, called Ice. And I'm um, going to get, in, get started with this. But we had originally, this past week, we had originally planned on going to uh, San Antonio to go see a football game and <laughs> then they they closed up shop before we had a chance to get there so uh, we had a uh, we talked about it decided whether or not we were still going to go to San Antonio or not I might sneeze here in a moment uh, and we decided uh, that we'd do something a little different so through the time we were off we went to Oklahoma City, and uh, in Oklahoma City, there's a uh, a canal in part of the downtown area, and we uh, went ahead and went on a little boat trip, and it takes you through the canal through part of uh, downtown Oklahoma City and gives you a little bit of history, uh, not only concerning the canal and how it came all about, but also about the uh, some of the history of Oklahoma and Oklahoma City and uh, it was pretty nice right time of the year the day that we went it wasn't cold wasn't hot it was just perfect perfect weather to be outside uh, it was a really nice ride we also had uh, stopped at a restaurant right there on the canal and had dinner at Jasmo's uh, uh, bourbon cafe <laughs> it was it was great right there with the ducks and everything else. It was pretty fun. I really enjoyed it. But then after that we went to uh, Eureka Springs in Arkansas and one of the things we went to go visit was the uh, Crescent Hotel. Now the hotel was built in uh, 1886 and a lot of the originality of the hotel is still there. Uh, 
just like it was from back then. So in other words, when you first walk in, uh, there's a doorman there to open the door for you. The doors are big and huge. And uh, on the inside there, uh, off to the left when you walk in, which is actually where we went in, what we thought would be considered the front is actually the back. <laughs> anyway, when we walked in, um, there just to the left is where the cashier is at, I guess you might say, the clerk. And uh, it's just like it was back then. There's all, all the little uh, boxes for the, for the rooms, if there were any messages. That's where it'd go. The safe was back there. Uh, everything, the whole counter, everything was still original. It is really cool. And of course, this is the same hotel that is considered to be haunted. And I um, think it's considered the fourth in the nation. Anyway, we went on that tour also. That was pretty neat. This particular hotel uh, also has been featured on TV at least once, it might have been twice, uh, where they were uh, exploring the, the possibilities of it being haunted. Now this particular hotel also at one point was turned into a, a hospital. I think it was back in the 30s when it was turned into a, a hotel. And I mean a, a, a hospital and it was supposed to be a hospital for curing cancer and of course you know how that worked out <clears throat> excuse me and that there there was no cure for cancer as a bit of a hoax I guess you might say any guy the way the story goes the guy was of course you know made, making hordes of money off of folks well they turned it back into a hotel, but part of what still remains is the place where they used to keep the ice and, of course, the morgue. <laughs> so we got to see all that. It's pretty cool. Down, uh, I guess you might say, the historic part of Eureka Springs, if you're not quite familiar with the lay of the land, it's very hilly and uh, especially in the historic part, uh, the roads were very narrow, hilly, crooked, and uh, so we had fun driving down those roads. But uh, it is just amazing down through there, what all is still original. We had a nice time. And definitely <clears throat> scored me an awesome clog proof that is just uh, I was really surprised I saw it you know and I you know it, once you know what you're looking for you can look past the you know the soap build up on a razor and whatnot and kind of be you know imagine how it's going to clean up and I uh, thought I was really lucky to find it even you know find one that was in as good a shape as this shaver and then to get it for ten dollars <laughs> what a steal Oh, the question was put to me is, um, you know, because you know, we got on a short conversation about it. And I said, well, I have one, but um, I'd like to get this one. And he says, well, why would you like to get this one? I said, because this one's in better shape than what I got. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Both of us did as far as that goes. We were celebrating... 20 years of marriage, which is this is a great month to be celebrating uh, a marriage, I guess you might say, right along with uh, when taxes are due, huh? But we had a good time. The scent on this is just awesome. Like I said, I thought the evergreen was really going to mess with my nose or to the point where I, because when I smell evergreens, you know, typically I think of uh, what it does to my nose and uh, the blend of all the, the scents did, did quite well.
really didn't think evergreen was going to be my a scent that I would appreciate. I do to a certain extent, but, you know, it brings back those memories, you know, being around it and then my nose starts to bug at me. I did find out, talking about pollen and things of that nature, I I say this time last year, they were talking about how the pollen count was, and it was around a thousand, and uh, pollen count around to you know this year compared to last year, we're near the four thousand mark. So it's like four times as much pollen at this time of the year than what, <coughs> excuse me, as it was last year. Pretty sure that's the reason why my nose has been giving me fits. compared to last year. Last year I didn't have nowhere near this kind of issue with my nose. But I did get a uh, coffee mug from the uh, hotel. <laughs> Wife got a shirt. Talk about not being alone. My wife really enjoyed the tour. It was fun to watch her. For me, I liked it because of the historical part of the hotel and how much of the hotel is still original. So for instance, the uh, uh, the keys to the hotel are the original keys. Actual key that you turn. <laughs> uh, the doors are still original. Uh, the doorknobs are in the center of the door as opposed to being off to one side. The halls are uh, very wide, especially compared to, uh, I guess you might say, modern hotels. These hallways were very wide. Plenty enough room for people to move in both directions with all their luggage. and uh, It was really nice. Talk about original. So in other words, the floors are not, how you say, flat. They have a little bit of a wave to them. Uh, they're, they're wooden, so... The stairs are wooden, so when you step, it creaks. It's goal. <laughs> Especially in a haunted hotel. Creaky, creaky floors. I still can't get over this scent. I really thought that this scent was going to be, that evergreen was really going to be off-putting. But the juniper... I think is what takes the edge off of it and adds to the, fla the scent flavor. <laughs> really glad I got this one. Picked up some brushes along the way. Inexpensive. Right at the $5 mark. And uh, definitely going to have to have them cleaned up and put some put different knots in them. It does make you wonder oh, what somebody was thinking at the time. Because uh, I'll show you here pretty soon. I haven't ever ready. The knot itself is not in bad shape. Matter of fact, it's uh, if whatever happened to it hadn't happened, I would probably just leave the lot and the knot in there. Because it's not shedding, it's staying put. But I don't know what they did to it. It's... Uh, you can tell that there's been a dye because it's not the whole entire uh, knot. And uh, I've been trying to get the dye to come out or see if it would stay put. And it's coming out, but it won't, how can you say, come out all at one time. It's just every time I try to clean it, some will come out, but it's still coming out. And um, no, I'm, I'm not going to leave the knot in there, but I've got a friend flying around in here. It's been very warm here. Upper 80s, near 90. Then it's supposed to turn cold this weekend and rain. So we've had the doors open, windows open, and enjoying the, the fresh air, if you will. But I don't know what they did to this uh, poor Ever Ready brush. I'll show you here in just a second. <laughs> that knot 
is. It's got to come out. Person kind of figured out that sort of thing coming out of a uh, shaving brush probably isn't going to be a good thing. Since uh, even though, for instance, I don't have any next cuts, weepers, or anything like that that you can see, but of course the Allen block will always tell you, um, will point out those areas that you didn't really notice that are you know due to the stinging. In other words, you probably nix yourself to the point where the stinging will happen but not to the point where you're going to be bleeding and but it's still a, an open you know part of your skin right after you cut through shaving and to have some unknown dye whatever it is it may not be dye it just maybe that it stained the the bristles of the brush not knowing what that is probably not a safe thing to do figure I'd be better off just go ahead and replacing the knot. But here's the uh, Ever Ready brush. It's stamped on the bottom and I know that's going to be probably really hard to see. But that's where the, it's stamped there on the bottom Ever Ready. And I think the number is 79. And right there you can see where it's got some sort of dye or something. So I don't know if it's hair coloring. I don't know what, what happened to this poor thing. But anyway, for the most part, it's in decent shape. I think it'll clean up nice, put a new knot in it. And I've got another one where the knot is still in good shape, but uh, it does need to get cleaned up. And still got some stuff I'm trying to work out right through that. I think if I didn't know any better, it's almost some sort of glue. It's really hard to get off. But um, this one here would be a nice one to clean up too. That's what the bottom of it looks like. Couple of ever reading I have $4.95 for each one. Couldn't pass it up. <laughs> Just can't let that stay on the shelf at that price. It'll be fun for me to tinker around with it and kind of learn how to re knot them. I not haven't made up my mind whether I want to try to re knot both of them myself and clean them up or if I want to send one of them out and have it all, how you say, beautified, <laughs> polished up, looking good. That I just may have to learn how to do it myself. That's why I'm kind of wondering. Great shave this morning. Nice and smooth. I enjoy the clog proof. The micromatics are, are they, they do me well. I know some folks, you know, have trouble with them, getting good shaves with them, but for me, they work out quite well. I think part of the uh, trick with the uh, the micromatics is um, it is. The angle is already preset, and if you go with that preset angle, the um, my friend's still flying around. Um, you have a better chance of getting a good shave. I guess you might say a smooth and comfortable shave. The uh, that's the preset angle I'm talking about. Is that right there? You keep that portion right there flat up against your face when you're first starting out until you learn how to shave with it. I keep it, or I try the best I can, try to keep it, that portion right there flat on my face. You might find that you'll get a better shave, but once you start raising up off of your face, changing the angle, it actually, yeah, it does get more aggressive. So, not that it's a, uh, I can see it's an efficient shaver. So, in other words, when you start changing that angle, it's gonna get aggressive. Kind of feel like it's already aggressive enough as it is. You're looking for a smooth, comfortable shave. You want to stick with that preset uh, angle. And for some folks, um, like I said, it's got a gem blade in it, and the uh, there's not very many choices when it comes to single edge blades for this shaver. And uh, you may not be able to find a blade that works well for you. In other words, not necessarily the razor's fault that you're not getting a good shave as opposed to the fact that you can't find a blade that works well for you. Face feels really good. I've only got a little bit of stinging right here. Probably got the angle off while I was busy talking and trying to shave at the same time. <laughs> 
this aftershave, um, it's a four ounce bottle. It is glass. Uh, everything, of course, you know, when I ordered it, came packed really well. Nothing was broken or anything of the sort. Smells really good. This is my first, matter of fact, my only uh, Captain's Choice that I had uh, that I purchased. I've seen the bowls, very tempting. Been keeping my eye on those bowls for quite some time. Just really nice looking shaving bowls. Just something about the bowl I have here. And I know I've mentioned it before, but perhaps you're new to the channel. Didn't see the video when I was uh, <laughs> singing this one's praises. This one here, like I said, I got it at a thrift store, paid a whole, what, 99 cents a dollar. And a lot of the print has rubbed off on the bottom. From what I could see of the print, it was made in Germany. Uh, this bowl is flat, I mean, smooth bottom. There's no grooves in it or anything of the sort. It does have like a pedestal bottom, easy to grab a hold of. And um, for me, it just does rather well. I like this shape, not only because of being able to hang on at the bottom, but how deep it is. And it's more of a, I guess you might say, almost a U shape. And it's deep enough to keep most of my shaving cream in there. I get kind of sloppy, I guess you might say. Start to really work in the, uh, the soap or the shaving cream I work in a circular motion like this. I really work from the sides and work it down towards the bottom. And uh, it just really seems to work out well for me. Captain's Choice bowls are more wider and I think a little shorter it looks like. So for me, adjusting mentally from that, you know, from one to the other, still have an issue with uh, trying to do that. It's just my personal preference. Many people have these bowls, these Captain Choice bowls. I've seen them everywhere. Very popular, and I could definitely understand why, because once you find your favorite bowl, it's a lot of fun to bowl lather, in my opinion. I had a great shave today. The, uh, the other thing I was going to point out is that the, make sure that I mentioned it, the shaving soap is sold out. But the cream in the aftershave is still available if you're interested in getting some. I'll put a link down below so you can find it a little bit easier. Hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe and smooth shades to you.